John chapter 12, verse number 24. Are we there? Yes, sir. Let's start from verse 23, please, so I can tie it down. Verse 23 says, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Verse 24. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. Take a look at that. He said, unless, it's Jesus saying, he said, unless, it's an emphasis there. There's an emphasis there. He said, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Verse 25. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Bless your one this afternoon. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. I'm teaching this afternoon the subject surrender at the cross. Someone say surrender at the cross. Surrender at the cross. Say my neighbor. Have you surrendered? Today is another day. Say my neighbor. Have you surrendered? Today. Say neighbor. Jesus Christ is calling you to surrender at the cross. All we can say neighbor. Jesus Christ. Say the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ is calling you to the place of the cross for you to surrender. Say neighbor. Today is a day to surrender to Jesus. Last week we looked at the subject, the trusting flow. And we took it from the book of Ruth, who was a gentile woman. We saw the origin of Ruth. Uh, she came from the lineage of Lot. When the Sodom and Gomorrah, and they got to a point in time when the father was old, the mother was really gone, tried to build up soul. And the eldest, the two daughters, the eldest one told the children that let us. Make our father to be drunk and sleep with him because he's at his own and he's about to die. So he can have lineage. So the first son was born and was given the name Moab. So Ruth came from Moab. Ruth is a Moabite, or she was a Moabite, who decided to leave her God and leave her people and follow Naomi. He said, Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. He said, Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. And we saw that in the beginning of chapter 1, there was desperation and catastrophe. There was famine and there was blood. They, at the end of chapter 4, uh, there was a recovery. There was celebration. Why? Because there was a wedding. I pray for somebody. Let it be your testimony by December. Amen. The is over. Let it be your testimony by December. Amen. Some are saying, January, I was in love. Then December, here comes, I come on. By December, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what is happening out there. I prophesy the name of Jesus. By December, you shall celebrate. Yeah. You, know, you shall celebrate. Yeah. I'm not talking about Christmas here. I say you shall celebrate. Yeah. I say you shall celebrate. Yeah. You shall celebrate. Yeah. You shall celebrate. Yeah. You shall celebrate. Yeah. All hope was done for Ruth. Then she held to the God of Israel. And the Bible says, I gave my home this chapter. She was in and in the end, she was uh, she recovered and she became the great grandmother of Christ uh, because a Moabite let go her God and took them to hold of the God of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to surrender to the God of Israel. It is time to surrender to the God of Israel. His name is called Jesus Christ. His name is called the Son of God. He's the only true God. He's a faithful one. He's a righteous one. He is God Almighty. It is time to surrender to Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no more time at hand. The rapture will so happen. The earlier we surrender, the better. Because the plans of God are embedded in his hand. And he is the one that determines your future. So if you don't no surrender, no future release. No surrender, no future reveal. Some of us are here. You. Some of us are here. You. So we saw last week that Ruth met Boaz at the threshing floor. So Ruth got married to Boaz at the threshing floor. Which means that Ruth had to surrender her will to Boaz. In marriage, she had to surrender to one person. Are we together? Now, Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, here if you go to if you go into marriage to take, then you fail. Ruth went into marriage to give. So if you go into marriage or relationship to take. 
get, you will fail it. Because if you don't get what you wanted to get, you will be depressed. But if you go to give, you will join. Are we here together? So Jesus Christ came, the Bible said, He is God Almighty. He left His glory up there and came down on earth and gave His life. And gave His life. So we may accept Him. How do you accept Him? Sorry. Someone said, Never surrender. So you never surrender. So we saw that Boaz and Ruth, they met at the crushing floor. So we saw that there was restitution, there was recovery, there was celebration, and there was establishment. Why? Because a Moab, a, a Gentile, uh, let me say a sinner, uh, left her God and took up the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. So Christ, listen to me, hear me. In swimming, hear me very well. In swimming, there's a principle. If you have a friend who's a life guy, life guard, as a low term. In swimming, you don't help somebody when they are drowning. What you do is you have to let them when somebody is drowning. You have to you have to stay close to them. Far away when I say close, not that too close to them. You have to observe and monitor them. And you want to go to rescue them when they are almost drowning. Why? They are the point of surrender. Because if you go when the person is struggling, he will pull you down and both of you will drown. Are we together? So the technique there is they allow the person to get to a level where they surrender, they are tired, they surrender. They are almost down. Then now the lifeguard comes from the backside, not from the front. He comes from the backside and he grab the person with both hands, grab their both hands and sweep backward with them. I want to get that. So if there's no surrendering, there's no rescue. If you don't surrender to Christ, you cannot rescue your soul. I want to get that. So Christ wants to save your soul. He wants to save our soul. Then we have to come back to the place where we surrender to the cross of color. Let's open to John chapter number 12, verse 24, where we read again. Jesus says something. Let's go back to that scripture where we read. John 12, verse 24. Again. He says, Are we on it? He says, verse 24, he said, I tell you, this is Christ saying, he said, I tell you the truth, unless a wheat of, unless a candle of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. This talks about surrendering. If you don't surrender, you cannot reproduce. You cannot bring forth, if you don't surrender to Christ, you cannot bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. If you if if don't surrender to Christ, you cannot be for the fruit in, in the physical world. I want to get that. Your productivity in life is a function of how much you surrender into the hands of the porter. He is the porter. We are the clay. But the clay must surrender. I want to get that. I want to get that. Now, if you go to the bakery, you go to the bakery, you discover that they use the same flour to bake diverse kinds of pastries. Some are wrong. Some are they can some they can call them, they can design them, but it's the same flower. But the flower must surrender, they have to beat the flower, the flower must surrender in the hands of the baker. So the baker molds or makes the bread into the shapes he or she wants. I will tell So does the porter, God Almighty, who wants to shape our lives. Even though maybe I'm on a uh, I may have made a mistake in the past. God can still reshape and remove your life. If only you can surrender to Him. He is a portal and you are just a clay. And the clay does not determine the shape he or she wants to be. It is the portal that determines. So it is the, so because before the shape is being molded, in the physical realm, in the case of the baker, uh, the, 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 uh, the mixture must surrender to the one called the baker. So we have to surrender to Christ because He is the owner of our lives. The big the Bible call him the bishop and the anchor of our souls. He wants to save your soul. He wants to save my soul. He wants to save the church. But he says, unless, unless a candle of wheat falls down and dies. Talks about surrender. That means you have to die to your soul. That means you have to give everything to Christ. The problem with us today in church is we are not yet surrender to Christ. Even though we're in church. Can I put it to you? Yes. Do you believe or oh, will you agree with me that somebody can even be a preacher that has not surrendered to Christ? Pastor, that's the reality. Somebody can be a minister that has not fully surrendered to Christ. 
Oh yes. The fact that I go to a theology school does not make me a preacher. Because nowadays we use theology. But God is not moved by our theology. He's moved by the revelation. Who do men say I am? Who do you say I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's moved by revelation, not by theology. God is higher and bigger than your theology. What am I trying to say? Because nowadays we might be in church when we are not surrendered to Christ. Jesus wants you to surrender to him. Ladies and gentlemen, rapture will soon happen. And if you are not in the hands of the potter, you will be left behind. And the choice again is yours. So say devil. I say devil. It's time to surrender. And the cross. One can say devil. It's time to surrender. And the cross. So he speaks here of, let's go back to that verse 24. He said, unless a wheat of kernel falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. A single seed. If you want to change your generational history or pattern, you must die in the hands of the Lord. If for, for, for you to change your generational pattern, maybe, maybe the pattern in your family is not pleasant. Yes, it can still be rechanged. If you can surrender to the hands of the Lord, to the porter, he, he, he has the ability to rechange and shape your life and impart in the generation to come. He said, unless it dies, it remains alone. Means if it doesn't die, it remains alone. So if I have a grain of corn in my hand, and if I don't let it die in the ground, it will not produce a corn. And a corn, and a, you look at it, a plant of maize produces so many corns. So from one grain, I have so many corns. So Jesus is saying, for your productivity is in my hands. But you must die to self. You must die to my hand. You must surrender to me at the cost of Calvary. Are we here to that? He said, but if it dies, probability. Which means that it might not die. Which means that you might not even show it. It which means that you might not surrender. He said, if you don't surrender, your life is your own and you lose your life. But if you surrender to me, I'm able to give you a new life. He said, you surrender to me, then you are able to bring forth a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. Why? According to the measure of how broken you are in the hands of the boss. Don't expect to bring a, a, a hundredfold harvest if you are not surrendered to the boss. The measure of your productivity, the measure of the output or, or, or the outcome, it is determined by how broken you are. It does who produce a hundredfold are those who are totally broken in the hands of the potter. Those who produce thirtyfold are those who are one leg in, one leg out. Those who produce sixtyfold are those who are just gambling. So it depends, but again, the choice is yours. Whatever a man's word, that shall he. Can I hear you? That shall he. I said, that shall he. He said, but if it does, it brings forth. Surrender at the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about you have to live that God all life. If it falls and dies, means it dies, the old life must die away. The old man must die away for the new man to be alive. The productivity in the hands of God is only for the new man. The old man does not reproduce in the kingdom of God. The old man does not. The old man is in the world, not in the kingdom. Because in the kingdom of God is only a new creation. Are we together? So there's no reproductivity for an old man in the kingdom. Even in the world, there's no reproductivity. Because a time will come whereby our works will be tested with fire. And Jesus is saying that. Uh, he said, build your account in heaven. Build your account in my kingdom. Because in my kingdom, fire cannot, fire cannot bring down your account. Fire cannot give out your account. But in the world, fire can. And if you are breathing on earth, ladies and gentlemen, when we all work, we have personal accounts. That in case of intensity, I can go and withdraw from my account and use the money to solve the problem. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? So if you don't have an account in eternity, how do you go there and use whatever you want? There's nothing for you. Someone say talk to me. <laughs> Someone say talk to me. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse 26, Jesus says something. The Bible says the plan of God, the plan of Jehovah for man, is for man to have authority. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. And the plan of Jehovah for me and you is for man to have authority. It's for man to subdue the earth. It's for man to multiply and to replenish. That is the plan of God for man. That is the plan of God. That's how he made it to be. But what is happening today? Before you subdue, before you multiply and replenish, it's a function of how broken you are. And the Bible says, you must reflect the image and the likeness of the God, the Son. 
So your productivity in the kingdom of God is determined by the quality of Christ Jesus you have in you. Which means or which speaks of the level of brokenness at the cross. No brokenness, no productivity. Someone say talk to me. Talk to me. Someone say talk to me. I can hear. My wife said, someone say talk to me. Can I hear the church say hallelujah? hallelujah? So there is no spiritual dominion. There is no spiritual authority. No subduing. No manipulation. No replenishing. If you are not surrendered to Christ. Don't expect to multiply. No sanoma. Out of Christ. No way. Because your abilities will fail you. Your efforts will fail you. I repeat this statement. They come a time when your qualification will fail you. There comes a point in time where your paperwork will fail you. Now here comes, uh, let's say that, any true born again, whatever you enter, any genuine born again, whatever you enter, things work for you better. Any genuine born again, anywhere you enter in the world, better things will work for you. Because God never failed this one. He said, I'm never giving up for a second. It's just a matter of time. But you must continue aligning with him. It doesn't mean that because I surrendered to Christ yesterday, I said, okay, I already surrendered to him. Let me live my life anyhow. No, sir, it doesn't work that way. When you surrender, you have to constantly surrender. Constantly. He said, if any man should come after me, he must deny himself. Constant surrender. No, I surrendered last year to Christ. No, sir, no man. Examine your life if you're saying the faith. Someone said, talk to me. <laughs> Someone said, talk to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So the above scripture of you multiplying or your authority and dominion is a function of how broken you are in the hands of the Holy Ghost. In the hands of Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13 verse 8. Matthew 13 verse 8. And I Are we all there? Surrender at the cross. Matthew 13 verse 8. Matthew 13 verse 8. So let's read that scripture of John 12 24. Uh, with Matthew 13, verse 8. Are we all? And I say, and I say, still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop of a hundred. It fell one, talk to me, it fell one, it fell one, is it on the tongue? Parable of the soil. Some seed fell on the good soil. So the productivity or the, the productivity of the seed determines is determined by the nature of the soil. There's clay soil, that's a seven plus six sugar, primary soil, clay soil, sandy soil. Anything you plant on sand does not thrive. Are we together? Yes, sir. That's how we There's people on soil, humans. That's the rich one. It's that and rich. Are we together? So Jesus is saying that he says some fell on good soil. When it produced a crop of 160 or 30 times as what was sown. As what was sown. So if you sow the quality of 30 fold, you receive the quality of 30 fold. So if you are broken in the quality of 30 fold, so you reproduce the quality of 30 fold. If you are broken in the quality of 100 fold, so you reproduce the quality of Wonderful. Elijah was a man who, who Eli, Eli, the Elijahs, the Elisha, these are people, Enoch, Abraham, these are people who were broken in hundredfold. So they could call down fire. I want to get that. So calling down fire is a function of brokenness. It is a function of how much you surrender to Christ, to the Lord Jesus. Elijah never woke up one day and said, Let's fire forward. If I be a man of God, it's not true. If you trace back his history, go back from where God he said El Elijah the Tishbite. He didn't look about his mother and his father. He said the Elijah the Tishbite. Just his introduction is very funny, very wide. Elijah the Tishbite. Then the story begins. That's all. So if you look at it very well, this man has been broken. He has surrendered to God. That's why he, that's why he could say, At my word, who are you to say at my word? And it comes to pass. Talk to me somebody. Who is man to say at my word? Which means that he, he, this man was, this man has been broken in the hands of the porter. So now the life he lives is not his life, his life. He's living the life of God in him, the life of Christ in him. So when he says it, it comes to pass. Enoch, 
In Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, God told Abraham, Abraham, walk up before me, before me and be the perfect. In Genesis chapter said, Abraham, Abraham, I, Abraham, the function of your brokenness before me determines the blessing that I bless you. In blessing of bless you, walk before me and be the perfect. So which means that Abraham, the more you surrender to my hands, I will perfect you. So after the perfection, here comes the blessings. He doesn't bless you before he perfects you. Because if God perfects you before he bless you, most of us will be proud. Someone say, talk to me. I mean, someone say, talk to me. That's why you see that when, when a young man gets richer than his elder brother, he becomes very arrogant. If he's not really born again. When a young lady is, uh, when a young lady gets married before her elder sister and she got a lady born again, come and see what in that family. Are we together? Yes. Why? Fresh horizon. Why? Competition. So people are like Enoch. The Bible says Enoch was visiting heaven and coming back. Enoch has an open check. He had an open check to heaven. He will go to heaven and talk to Jehovah and come back and laugh. And laugh. Go back. These are people who are broken, wonderful. These are people who, who, who surrender their lives, wonderful. Jesus said, if you want to give your life, you will lose it. But if you want to lose your life, you see, if you lose your life for me at the cross of Calvary, I'm able to keep your life and take it to eternity. For I have come in the half life because when, you, well, because when you lose your life for my sake, I will give you a better life which is called eternal life. That is only at the cross. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 8. Matthew 13, verse 8. He says, Still, some fell on good soil. There is uh, where it produced a crop of 160, 30, and as much as it was so. So, Christ is saying that uh, the, the quality of your heart that you surrender to me will determine the output in your life. Not just in your life, in your generation to God. The quality. So you cannot fool God, rather you are fooling yourself. You cannot deceive God, you are deceiving yourself. You can deceive men for some time, but how long will you deceive men? Yes, you can deceive a man today. What about tomorrow? When you open the door of deceit, remember you stand to keep it open. But when Jehovah, when you that's why when you say the truth, the truth is the truth speaks for itself. Ladies and gentlemen, when you speak the truth, you don't need to back it up. Are we together? Thomas, come to me. Thomas, talk to me. <laughs> Yesterday, Friday, that was on Friday, we were having service here. We were having service here. And I went out to pick up to the, I went out to pick the pins from the car. And I met a young man from my nation. I met him outside. He was running his basket of passing. I said, ah, young man, so you don't know churches today? He said, ah, pastor, I, I, I didn't know the service today. He said, I didn't know. The guy spoke. Pastor, I didn't know this church on Friday. I didn't know. And he was sincere and serious. When I got back home, I said, okay, you know now. When I got back home, I sat down. I like the Holy Ghost. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, thank you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I say, God the Father. I say, God the Son. I say, God the Holy Ghost. I say, God the Holy Ghost. Talk to me. 
So he says, so the productivity in your life is a function of the quality of how broken you are. So surrender is a function of submission to Christ. James 4, verse 7. Shall we go back? James 4, verse 7. We are looking at the subject, surrender at the cross of Calvary. Now remember this one, we are looking at the subject, the chief cornerstone. So you cannot be built on the chief cornerstone if you are not surrendered to him. James 4, verse 7. You cannot, you cannot be built on the chief cornerstone if you are not surrendered to Christ. You cannot be built on the chief cornerstone if you are not submitting yourself to him. You cannot walk on the ancient path if you are not surrendered to Christ. You must surrender to the one called the ancient path. Now he now takes you and through the narrow way. Are we together? James 4 verse 7 to 8. He says, submit yourself then to God. Submit yourself to God. Surrender yourself to God. Because you cannot resist temptation on the enemy if you are not submitted to God. So the submission of listen, listen, the function of your resistance to the enemy is determined by how broken or how submissive you are to Jehovah. Hallelujah. He says, submit to God and resist the enemy. Surrender to Christ and resist. So he's the one that helps you to resist the enemy, not you. Your abilities will not help. It's God's ability. And by the grace of God. Hallelujah. As I Go to verse number 10. Uh, verse number 8. Verse number 8 says, Come here to God and he will come here to you. Surrender. Surrender to him. And he will pick up your life. Come back to the cross and surrender to Jesus. Jesus will pick up your life. Your life may have been broken and shattered and battered. Surrender to him. Show your life to Jesus at the cross of God. He will pick it up and make it again. And again, and again, and again, and again. It's the same yesterday. I see you always as me. Today and tomorrow. 
If you can surrender to him today, he's able to rebuild your present and rebuild and give you a hope and a future. And ladies and gentlemen, whatever you lost in the past, he's able to bring it back in the future. The still restoration. We saw in the we saw in the life of Ruth. She in chapter one, she lost her home and lost everything in more. But in the end, uh, she recovered everything. So Jesus is able to help to recover everything. But have we surrendered to him? We surrender to men. We submit to men. And we call them Papa. Someone say, talk to me. I'm in relation. Someone say, talk to me. Someone say, talk to me. Hallelujah. There's a trend that going on for the past two, three years. A trend. That a young man will come out. Don't get me wrong. Yes, God speaks to people. God speaks. But if a young man comes up and you see nowadays you put on skin tight suit, sweet, good money, and once uh, one the person can see just one prophecy, one he sees and talk to God, the whole church was calling Papa. Am I going to share? Let me go. We are not here. So once he talk to me. <laughs> once he sees one thing, only one thing, and it's true. He wants you not to call him my name. No, don't call him pastor. Call him prophet. Prophet Amy. Yes. After prophet, you call me Papa. Say Papa. Someone say Papa. Someone say Papa. Someone say Papa. So we submit to men. Call it again. We submit to men. They don't to Christ. So that man is to me. Those men will fail you. Man fail. Man fail. Man fail. Let all men be liar. Man fail. Twice. Never fail. Show me to Christ Jesus and not to men. Don't get me wrong. We have to we have to honor the authority. Don't get me wrong. It's a different thing now. There's an authority in any organization which you have to follow. You show me to that authority and there are, are rules and regulations. Don't get me wrong. It's a different world than what's happening in church today. Today is more ego in church. And we don't need church. So much a hallelujah. So much a hallelujah. Show me to Christ, not to men. Jesus is the final authority. When I'm on earth, only heaven. There's no other name in heaven. On earth, beneath, where men are saved, there's no other name than the name of Jesus. So above all is Christ. Submit to Christ. Hallelujah. As hallelujah. So once you enter, then, let's, continue, let's continue. So to surrender means you need to come to the place called the altar of sacrifice. Now, let's go back to in the, in the, in the book of Leviticus and Exodus. Now, the Bible says God gave Moses a template of the tabernacle. Now, we had the outer court and we had the holy place and we had the holy holies. Now, when you enter the outer court, the entrance is called the gate. And Jesus Christ is the gate of life. I am the way. He is the way to the Father. He is the gate of life. All that shepherds came and they passed through the world. Those are robbers and thieves. He said, I am the way. I am the gate. Are we together? Now he says something. He said, once you enter the way, the first thing you see there, which is a, which is like rectangular, is called the altar of sacrifice. Before you get to the liver, when the liver is where you have the water, where after you after the priest or the, after the liver, the priest, uh, the sacrifice on the altar, they now move to the liver where they wash their hands and their feet before they enter the holy place. Are we together? So if you don't pass through the altar of sacrifice, you cannot enter the holy place. Progress of the Holy of Holies. So the, so, so the, the function of your sanctification, the function of your brokenness will determine if you enter the Holy of Holies or you, sorry, the function of your brokenness on the altar of sacrifice will determine if you remain at the altar court or you enter the Holy Place or you will enter the Holy of the Holies. Many enter the altar court, the few enter the Holy of Holies. Many are called, few. Are we here together? So the quality of brokenness you have determines how you will enter really with God in the Holy of Holies. We want to enter the Holy of Holies, but we don't want to be broken. Jesus said, when you come to the court and surrender, the first thing, I will make a way for you to be broken. The first thing is you must surrender to him. No surrender, no worship. Sanctify them, John something, something. Sanctify them by the word of truth. I sanctify myself for their sake that they may be sanctified as well. Why? There's no sanctification if you are not broken. Surrender first before he sanctifies you. 
So you must enter, surrender. Then he sanctifies you. Then you cannot enter the holy place where you cannot look at the prayer, which is the word of God. You can be drinking the blood at communion before if this one is okay. Then now the Holy Ghost can carry to the Holy of Holies to be God Almighty. Out there. Psalms 51 verse 17. Surrender at the cross. Psalm 51 verse 17. Put your place. Psalm 51 verse 17. Are we all there? Surrender at the cross. Can we say surrender at the cross? I cannot hear. Say surrender at the cross. I'm here only my song. Say surrender at the cross. Psalm 51 verse 17. Are we all there? Verse 17 says, It says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, will you not despise? Two things. The sacrifices God wants are a broken spirit number one. A broken spirit is on the altar of sacrifice. Church today is not broken. Church is not broken today. Because if you are broken, you know you need sin. If you have been to the listen to me, if you have been to the cross of Calvary, you will not nail Christ again the second time on the cross. Says the scriptures. If you have been to the cross of Calvary, you will not be sold and fight people. If you have been to the cross of Calvary, you will be broken. They will see yourself. Look at this man. This man is a weak man. No, he has been to the cross. He seems to be weak physically, but he has been to the cross. That's why he's broken. Are we together? He said, the sacrifice that God wants is number one, a broken spirit. Number two, he said, a broken and a contrite heart, I will not despise. So he's talking about a heart that has been surrendered to him, a spirit that has surrendered to him totally, surrendered to Christ. If you want to change your life, you lose it. Church today, believers, strong God believers, we are going to surrender to Christ. That's why we cannot command the enemy and it comes to us. Because a genuinely born again operates under the lepers around him. Can I teach a little bit? Can I teach a little bit? Yes, sir. There are three types around him. The first one, once you become born again, you, you know, once you become born again, you receive. The Bible says, when once the Jesus is called, genuinely you become born again, you repent. The Bible says, we are engrafted with war, the promise still called the Holy Ghost, a deposit in God. Therefore, that's, that's the first level of deposit called the lepers around Without anointing itself, you can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. It's the same Holy Ghost. Now, it depends now on your work with Him a long time and how broken you kill the flesh and the soul is faith. That will determine to get to the leper's anointing. We have the priestly anointing. The priestly anointing. Are we together? Yes, sir. As I was together. After the priestly anointing, you go now to the kingly anointing. The kingly anointing commands the world. Are we together? So if you get to the king anointing, it is determined the, 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 the priest anointing and the king anointing, it is determined by how broken you are on this altar of sacrifice. Before this oil can be poured on you, you must be broken. You must be broken to a level whereby it's only things that come to you that God will not speak to you not again. Am I not in this church? No, I'm not here. Huh? Because if you're not broken, if you're not broken, you if you're not broken, even though you're ministering, you might be converted to people's properties. If you're not broken. I might say something here. If you're not broken, you convert both properties. Ah, somebody brings a blending to you, say, no, Pastor. Ah, the pastor said, no, I won't take. He said, ah, God say, I bless you, God bless you. Even if the person is you, you know the person stole the money, he stole the car, you know very well and brought the car to you. Because he brought it, God bless you. Because that man is not broken. That man ministry is not broken. Because if you are broken, you tell the million one things and go back. Not every kid is a kid. Not every seed is a seed. Some seed are there to contaminate you spiritually. Yeah. I'm not in this place. Yeah. So if you are not broken, you receive anything, everything. Convert yourself. Because you focus on material things. A man who is broken does not look at material things. He's looking at more of God. More of you I want. More of Christ I want. Are we together? Yes. Are we together? Yes. I cannot hear. Are we together? Yes. I love a man called Papa Enoch Adeboye. Very many use my example. He is broken. What does he need? If it were some of us in that position, if it were some of us in in that position, Hallelujah. Pride is nothing. It means we will walk. People will, in fact, we'll be walking on people's head. Come, we'll be walking because I'm the CEO. I'm the If it were some of us. 
But he is a broken man before God. Nothing in the world moves him. But he wants to please only God and God alone. An example of a man alone. Papa Abu Abutu. Yes, when he came in the last time, he had been here two or three times. The first time he came, I was praying all alone. I want to have an encounter with him. It's at the levels. The levels, almost the levels. You are unknown. See the levels. In his grace, he got the man. Papa Christ. The other is, I come I want to have an, an encounter with him one on one. Is it possible? Yes, yes. It's possible, is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? And before, before you see him, you have the, the, the will make sure that people write their names from Pakistan, from India, they book to meet him. When he comes in, how do I know? Because I went to my family, I was praying and fasting and oh Lord, Lord, take me to him, for him to pray for me one on one. I never knew that you have to book. I like the God I serve. He's the God of heaven. I say he's the God of heaven. Yes, sir. <laughs> he has failed me. Listen to me. He has failed me. I'm not of heaven. I tell you, friends. You must book. When I went to my family, say, okay, what's your name? I told them my name. For him. Say, no. They check some of it. Say, this boy is in the hall. They're from India, Pakistan, Europe, and so on. Canada, you know, as they came. They, they, they book long time. So they are here for you to pray for them. So you are not registered. So please go. I stood there at the door. I said, I won't go. I have to meet him. He looked at me. So why are you coming from? I said, my John. He said, um, for but normally we don't do this. Uh, normally we don't do this. I don't know. Normally we say, I won't do it because you see, it's not authorized. But what's your family? You should not be just working. Someone say favor. Favor. <laughs> Someone say favor. Favor. <laughs> I don't know how to So when we entered that home, we're almost defeated the, the last boy before. The Holy Ghost brought me in front of him, in front of my own eyes. The prayer was answered. I went before him for him, and I knew that he prayed for me. And I saw him later on. He came to me. I was telling something in the dream. Now, when he came here, I think last year, like that, he came here last, I think last year, last two years. Last year, he came. He came and oh, oh, I think then we're having the same story in the religion. And I heard a voice. He said, Today, they said, they said it to him. Who was it? And we gathered everything and said to him. And he got the money as a seed. He doesn't need our money. We need the grace. Yes. Someone's hallelujah. Someone's hallelujah. Yes, we have to show. I heard and I obey. Friends, I know what I'm talking about. I know the people that have come to me for encounters. Bishop Bessie in the house has come to me twice and prayed for me twice in my dream. Uh, Bishop uh, Papa Enoch Ateboe has come. I remember the last time. So many of them have come to me. Uh, they have been praying for me. They come to me and they pray for me. The last one was uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lukoya. He came with a private jet. It was all gold. He said, I came to pick you on a special mission. I said, why? He said, no. They say you are special. Come, let me fly you. And I entered the aircraft with my first one. And the story that the aircraft was just two of us with my first one. I said, why? 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 He said, no. He said, no. They said, I should come and pick you for this special flight. I said, who is the pilot? He said, I am the pilot. The plane was all gold. And I remember one time. That was about some few months ago. Few months ago. Breaking few months ago, we were about to have a Sunday service like this. I'm talking about brokenness. When you are broken, he reduces, he, he brings them to you to empower you. Brokenness. He sees your heart. I went together. Someone said, talk to me. Someone said, talk to me. So I was lying down, and all of a sudden I was taken. I, I saw, I saw that the, the I saw Bishop Oyelepo. He was moving in an entourage. I've not seen him physically. Hallelujah. I've not seen him one on one. I have not. I have not. I have not. So I, I was on a Sunday morning. I was lying down. And I was carried to the red. And I saw him. He was moving in an entourage. They were wearing blue, blue and white uh, shirt and a red tie. That's what I saw. So there were many of them moving. So he was wearing white and white. And white shoe. He was just moving. He was moving like this. Moving like this. So they're moving like this. And all of a sudden, it's like he was going for a service, like a crusade, an open crusade. And I stood from and I stood from afar and I saw myself that I came to the phone. I don't know how. And all of a sudden, he all of a sudden as he was walking like this, because the bodyguards were looking left and right, nobody was focusing on him. And all of a sudden I saw that he was about to fall on the ground. I don't know how I left where I was. I ran to him. I said, Papa, you cannot fall. You cannot fall. I knelt down and I held him. He woke up. He said, Because you did it to me, I'll pray for you. He said, Leave down and down and lay this out on me. I pray for you. Yes. Towards the encounters. 
I got a false encounter. So it's the function of your brokenness in the house of God. So it's a holiday. So the first thing you have to understand is, he said, the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken heart, and the Lord will not respond. So number one, you must surrender yourself, you must surrender your will to pick up the will of God. Uh, for his plans to manifest in your life, you must surrender to Christ totally. When you surrender the cross of Calvary, Christ pick up your life. Romans 2 verse 4. God's kindness brings us to the place of repentance. Or to the place of surrender. The cross of God brings us to the place where we surrender to Christ at the cross of Calvary. Christ, Christ surrendered at the cross to establish the will of the Father in my life and in your life. For the, the, for the will of the Father to be done, the Son surrendered his own will. If Jesus Christ never surrendered his own will, none of us will be saved. Because he will never go to the cross. His own will will never take him to the cross. But he surrendered his will to the will of the Father. That his will, the Father's will, may be done. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. I remember one time, I think almost four months ago, I shared this with us, my encounter at the cross. It's almost four months. Four minutes ago. I was praying in my prayer room and I was carried to a place where I saw a cross stand. This one. I didn't say Jerry. I didn't say Moody. No. I was praying. I was finally praying and I saw that I, I found myself in front of the cross of Calvary. And the, in front of the cross was that. In front of the cross is a world. That's that. So the cross has room to invite sinners to come to be saved. So he's waiting for the dark world, the sinner in the dark world, to come to repentance and by grace of God. I was there. So I was kneeling and I was praying, and all of a sudden my eyes opened. And I saw that I was in front of the cross of Calvary. It was dark. And when I looked at the right side, it was dark. When I looked at the left side, it was dark. Above, it was dark. And all of a sudden, I was carried through the cross. Are we together? Are we together? So we see that your ability cannot see the glory of God. I looked, it was dark. I looked, my ability. But I was carried through the cross. I was carried through. So if you are not surrendered, if you are not surrendered, the Holy Ghost cannot carry you through the cross. Listen to me. When he carried me through the cross, I saw the glory of God behind the cross. I was there. So we are glorified only when we come to the cross and he takes us through the cross. When you surrender to Christ, he takes you through the cross. If you go around the cross, you will not see it. If you go around the cross, you will not see it. The Holy Spirit must carry you through the cross. So it's a function of you surrendering your heart, your life to him and tell you that now he now picks up the broken life and makes it to be a new man. Only when you surrender to Christ. Number two. So when you surrender to Christ at the cross, you see, ladies and gentlemen, we are in no person. Church never have ignored the place of the cross. Church has ignored the message of the cross. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel of Christ. Which gospel? The true gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation to anyone who believes. Where was the power released? Where was grace released? Where was mercy released? Where was love shown to us? So the cross has a message for me and you. It has a message for the church. And forever, the church, forever, the message of the church remains the same. Jesus is calling you, Lord sinners, to repent. For the time, he said, my, my, he said, my, he said, my grace is about to expire. So we see that when you come straight at the cross, at the cross, there is substitution. Which means that Christ will take, pick up your life and give you his own life. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we are upon sinners for all our fallen short of the glory. We have sinned and fallen short of the glory. So he wants to come to the place of the cross and surrender your life. That he might take your dirty life, your stinking life, your life which is full of sin. He might take it and exchange his own life for eternal life. He wants to give you his own life and take your life. That's why he died on the cross. He became an altar of sacrifice. He became, uh, he died on the cross that sinners might come to the Father. All come to the Father through Jesus, the Son. So what's the Holy So what's the Holy Spirit? So some teachers speak of taking the place of another, or exchanging something for another, or exchanging a person for another. Instead of me dying on the cross because I owe the debt I couldn't pay as a sinner, 
But Jesus says, don't worry, by my grace. Because you're surrendered, now take my life which is eternal. Give me your life. And he died on the cross for my sin. Substitution at the cross. So when we surrender, our life are substituted with life. Not your ability. He does it for you. Christ does it for you. The Holy Ghost does it for you. For his will, for Galatians 1 4. Christ gave up himself for our sins at the cross. Hebrews 2 9. Christ suffered death for all that we may receive a new life. But we must surrender to him. Isaiah 53 verse 5. Jesus took our place. He took our place of condemnation of wrath. Shame, pain. My father, my father, why art thou forsaken me? God, the father, turned his back. Why? Because God is sin. God is holy. For the eyes of God are holy because he cannot be holy iniquity. The eyes of God are too holy. God is holy. Forever he remains holy. So when he saw sin on the, on the soul, the son took my sin on the cross. So the father looked at sin on the soul and said, no, I am the holy God. I cannot look upon sin. So he turned his back. He said, my father, why do you ignore me? Why do you forsake me? God said, no, because you have been the sin of my son. I'm the only bad sin. And after that moment, Scripture says, whoever believes in him and comes and surrenders, the same thing will happen. He will take their life and give them his own life, which is your abundant life. Substitution at the cross of God. So when I come to surrender, not just to surrender, I come to surrender that he may take my own life and give me his own life. What we need most is the life of God in us. Eternal life. So to talk to me. Number one is surrender. Two, substitution. We have the responsibility to come to surrender, to pick up a new life in Christ. Many are in church, but they are never surrender. You cannot be built on the cornerstone if you are not surrendered. Because when you surrender, he will build you on the cornerstone. Are we together? Yes. Finally, on the cross, there is redemption. So you surrender to the redeemed. We surrender at the cross so our souls can be redeemed. For Jesus is called the redeemer. Are we together? So we surrender at the cross for our souls to be redeemed by the Lord Jesus. So redemption, Jesus took our place to redeem us. Galatians 3.13 He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Can we open Galatians 3.13? Everybody. Galatians 3.13 Galatians 3.13 We are about to go. Galatians 3.13 are we all there? Galatians 3 13. Are we all there? Are you saying that this afternoon? Christ redeemed us. Christ redeemed me. I personally. From the curse of the law. By becoming a curse for us, for me. For this written. Because it's anyone that is born on the tree. That the blessings of Abraham may come unto us. He became a curse. That I may be blessed. He became a curse that I may be healed. He became a curse that I can have an abundant life. He became a curse that I can have the power of the Father, Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary. That it, he said, so that the blessing of Abraham may come to the Gentiles through Christ, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. We say Abraham blesses a man. Have you done what Abraham did? Abraham surrendered to God. Abraham's blessings are man. Very good. I'm a son of Abraham. Very good. I'm a daughter of Abraham. Very good. But have you done what Abraham did to receive the blessings? Abraham lived a surrender life. God told him, Go and offer your son Isaac. He obeyed. Why? He was living a broken life. He knows that God was coming. God will tell him to him if he died, God is able to bring him back to life. He became the father of faith and of righteousness. He believed God against all odds. One, he lived a broken life. Surrender to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. So redemption is the act of serving or being saved. Serving our soul. We all have broken God's law. We all here sitting here have broken God's law. We all here have broken the Ten Commandments. We all, see this very hour I'm talking, we are broken God, God ten, uh, the Ten Commandments. Listen to me. If you break one commandment, you are broken all. So you are doomed for wrath and condemnation. Can you withstand it? 
No, sir, I can't. I need the grace to speak for me. And mercy. Jesus said, come and surrender. Because you are broken my law. I'm the one who is able to cover you up by my Lord. I'm the one who is able to pour you and give you by my Lord. He said, no. I want to live my own life. He said, if you want to gain your life for yourself, you lose it. I will tell you. So redemption is a function of the total and genuine surrender to Christ. To be established in life and to fulfill the mandate, the plan, the mission, the purpose of God Almighty for us. You must be a living sacrifice unto the hands of God. Paul says in Romans 4, verse 1. Verse 1. I have to put us by the mercies of God. Offer yourself and living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable act of service. Verse 2. Do not be conformed with the pattern of the world, but let it be the renewal of your mind. Now, my emphasis is verse 1. You see, you see, no altar, no altar, whether, whether evil or good altar, takes dead things. No helper needs accept any dead chicken for the joy. I will tell you. They want a live chicken. So, the altar of God needs a life person. He needs you. He needs you to bring your life on the altar of sacrifice and surrender to Him, Jesus Christ. And He'll pick it up from there. Are we together? There's still room at the cross. So at the cross, when you surrender, there's mercy and there's grace. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the end time where Jesus is coming soon. If you have your life in your hand, you lose it. With some premise, I surrender my life to Him. Hallelujah. And that's only at the place called the cross of Calvary. For the cross of Calvary is the ultimate altar we have, or we shall ever have, or we have. Someone say,